happy Tuesday. I hope everyone's well. Welcome back to the sewing room. I have not been having a great couple of days. I have got my red bracelet on still. Fingers crossed this is the last day of the flare-up. It usually only lasts three days so it should be fine. Mum and I went to see Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness yesterday. Second time for me, first time for Mum. That helped. The distraction helped but yeah I am. Um, I think you're wonky as well. Why are you always wonky? Not sure that's improved it. I have my little <laughs> tiny little antenna going on here at the moment. Fun times. So I have had a very exciting order arrive from Emmeline Bags in Canada. I have got a lot of hardware in here and what I wanted to do, two secs. So when Erica was here on the last day when she were, we'd, we'd both sewn our Hariath bags up and I was kind of like just pottering around because I had to go out for my appointment. No, I've been to my appointment. So I was just pottering around thinking about getting some things cut out and I kind of decided to write down a list of the things that I wanted to make and the bags that I wanted to make and then work out which hardware I had and which hardware I didn't have. So I've got a Hariath that needs to be finished because I haven't got any feet for the one that I did and strap ends. Got another Hariath to make as well as a gift. I've got a Sky and an Ast, two Asters, a Janine and uh, yeah, uh, two Asters, two Annettes, a Sky, a Janine and Hariaths. So that was all the bags. I wrote down all the hardware I needed. I've ordered it, it's arrived and I'm now going to put them into kits. When Rachel messaged me just before the retreat about what we bag we were going to be doing and kits and stuff like that she was like i think i probably ordered it last time and she was going through her stash and she came up with some bags of hardware she's like i have no idea what this is for i know what i'm like i have one kit prepped in my bag hardware stash over here which is for an aster bag but if i hadn't it's the only one i've got that's there that I know is for an Asta bag and then if I try and put some other kits together and then don't label them I am never going to remember what's for what. So that's what I'm going to do is go through my Emmeline bag order and separate stuff out into kits. I pretty much know which fabrics they're going to be going with. Once that's done I can then just pick a bag to make and hopefully get them done over the next couple of months because I do have like I say quite a lot of bags that I would like to get done. The only thing I didn't order was the zips because the zip place that I usually use the zipper station on eBay weren't listing anything at the moment so I've messaged them and they just told me to give them a list of the zips that I want so I need to go through and do that. But other than that I uh, yeah I, I should have all my bag kits, kits and fabrics ready. I have ordered some interfacing. I've got some Decoville Heavy, Decoville Light and Pelon SF101, which is what most bag patterns recommend or a combination of those things. I'm gonna give it my best shot to try and use those as economically as possible because they are all expensive. So I, um, I've only ordered a meter of one, two meters of another and three meters of another one or three yards maybe even as well. So yeah, I won't be kind of like, I'll, yeah, I'll probably have to order more interfacing as we go along, but we'll see, we shall see. Then I'm going to start working on one of my sewing projects today. I think I'm gonna start with the shirts because they are small projects that I should be able to get done at least one of them today. So I should have something sewn new to show you. As you guys know, I write down everything that I make over the year so that I can do a review of the year. And so far I've made 28 things this year, not including the scrunchies. I think there's been six scrunchies and quite a few key fobs which haven't been included in that 28 things but yeah I'm gonna keep writing them all down so that I can show you at the end of the year like you know this is what I made and I'm breaking it down into months and making charts from it as well which is really exciting and who knew making charts would be so much fun like pie charts and graphs and things like that I'm doing it all on Canva so yeah having having a whirl of time with that so yes it's uh that's that's my plan for today. I did have purple and olive Mora leather on here as well, but I haven't ordered those because they are really, really expensive and I am going to wait until I actually want to make the bag from that thing rather than just have it all in stock sitting there to be made at some point in the future. That's the plan. That is the plan. So I'm going to get all of this organised. Hopefully it'll make sense. We shall see. I put my laptop down with me so I can have a look at the patterns and put them into the correct group together. So let's get that done. A few moments later. Okay, bag hardware kits are done and I have 
six of them. It wasn't all ordered. I had a lot of stuff already. I just needed to get little bits and pieces to make those kits possible. I have also got the strap ends, the nickel strap ends for this and its feet. So this bag is now 100% complete. Right, battery's dying. Of course, the minute I turn the camera on, the rain stops. It's like a torrential downpour that you could totally hear. Yeah, you probably can't hear it at all because it's massively quietened down now. Wonder if we're gonna have a lightning and thunderstorm like we did the other day. So I have just turned the iron back on because I have got the facing onto my white shirt, which means I need to press all around, sew up the burrito of the yolk, and then sew the side seams, can sew the sleeves on, got the sleeves made and hemmed so so those on buttons holes and buttons and then done oh and i'm trying to debate whether i carry on and sew the kiwi one or if i start cutting out one of the other bags that i want to make because i might yeah i might do that i don't know i don't know i'm not sure i am trying to keep myself busy and kind of failing at the moment but it is one of those things. I finished all the Bridgerton books, I've probably told you this, but it's been quite a while. And I'm now kind of re-listening to a whole bunch of Georgette Heyer. I have a load of her books already, and I think the next couple of ones that I'll buy from Audible with my monthly credits are some more Georgette Heyer, because I don't have all of them and I would like them. I'm currently listening to Friday's Child, whose hero is called Hero, and her nickname is Kitten, and that's one of the reasons behind my nickname so um yeah it's a really favorite it's a favorite book of mine definitely there's a bit at the end with nemesis which is just brilliant absolutely brilliant if you haven't read any georgia Heyer and you like regency rom-coms then definitely friday's child is a really good one anyway rain's kind of stopped now so i'm gonna hopefully the iron's on so i'm gonna go and press my facings so that i can sew up all those seams i just mentioned two hours later i have finished it and i really like it it's really cute so let me just tip you down a little bit i will i've got my high-waisted trousers on i will probably wear it with high-waisted trousers uh these are the ponty jogging bottoms mccall seven six five three five four something like that my um head for numbers is abandoning me at the moment but yeah i i really like this i have done a full bicep adjustment on the sleeves because they were slightly too tight for me the first time round. but these ones fit me really nice and comfortably it's the vogue 9345 shirt dress with the butterick 5951 it's not that one 5985 I think it is the Gertie shirt I've stolen basically the kind of bottom tie part of that I think it's been really successful I do really love that Gertie shirt but it does get really thick around the back and it does have growing on sleeves which are not my favorite as you guys know so I just you know every now and again one of these I think it's going to go really nicely with a couple of the pieces that I've made from the Cobra Corsage collection the black and mulberry skirts for sure I had five meters of this fabric and I've also cut out the McCall's 6891 shirt dress which I might start working on tomorrow. I have another one of these shirts in the kiwi colour sleeveless and I am going to make some bias binding to finish off the armholes for that one because I just like how that looks but yeah I'm really pleased with this I think it's really nice I do I just love this collar I think this collar is awesome it's a very very nice collar so yeah very pleased with this definitely need to kind of try and perfect the fit of the one that i've elongated i added four inches below the waist and then i did add width to those pieces as well but it was still slightly too tight across this area so i think i talked to you guys about this i think i'm going to do the next one in a white viscose and i'm going to fully line the bodice which will mean that i can leave little sort of one inch or one and a half inch side slits so that I won't have that too tight issue at the sides and I always I'm always going to want to wear that skirt oh, I'm always going to want to wear that shirt tucked into trousers or skirts so I think I'm going to give it another try with the pattern that I've done so far because I did do it with a coral viscose which I kind of like but again it's really sheer and I kind of wish I'd f I'd I'd lined the entire body rather than just putting the facing in. That's why I want to do the same with the white one because I do really like white shirts but I hate when you can see the facing underneath them. Obviously because of the Revere collar which I believe means that it's 
revealed this this is the facing here i think with a revere collar you end up with a really quite a wide facing which i'm not sure if it's are super obvious with this one but with a ship with a white viscose shirt they are tend to be quite see-through just you know the nature of the fabric so i think if i fully line the entire body of that shirt it will not have that sheerness and then the sleeves will be the one layer because i want to do the really big sleeves and then the cuffs and the collar and everything will be double layered because that's just how they're made so I, my, in my head that's going to work and I think that's the reason that I don't wear the coral one is because you can really obviously see the facings in that one and I kind of wish I'd fully lined it but it was an experiment and it was an inexpensive fabric from the fabric room that I can get more of and I am going to use some other inexpensive fabric to test out my theory with the white shirt as well so I won't be wasting any fabric but yeah I'm very pleased with this indeed I like this I mean Again, I know some of you are very sick of seeing Cobra Corsage and there aren't that many projects left. There are two, three dresses and one shirt left. So four more projects in Cobra Corsage and then I've only got two lengths of it left in my stash, the velvet and the canvas drill, which I'm hoping to use for trousers and a kind of smoking jacket I said I was going to try and do with the velvet, didn't I? So yeah, there is a little bit more Cobra Corsage to come in the future, but I will be moving on to leaves as soon as these projects are done, which I'm excited about. I might break it up with some bag making in between projects though we shall see anyway i hope you've enjoyed the little bit of waffle that i have done today i will see you all tomorrow bye hey peeps happy wednesday welcome back to the sewing room i am down here just before midday which is unusual for me i have been editing this morning for the video that's going out on saturday which is the er erica from lavender and twine interview and i have got some outtakes and funny bits from both that video and the all the bags i've ever made video which i'm going to include now um, but for now just come in and pretend you like me no don't show that one that's oh, that's for the interview right. <laughs> hey peeps welcome to another video today it is the all the bags i've never met today it's the all up oh, <laughs> oh no today it's the all the bags i've ever made video there we go managed to say it <laughs> i ask this every time but do you remember what we say okay peeps <laughs> yeah <laughs> nearly said it's the same as mum always like she's like hello peeps hello. she's like no my best <laughs> how, how many years so have we been doing this <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> okay now i've got to tidy all this up and this Fun times. One of my favourites, maybe. What? What? Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know if I should ask you if you prefer flowers or leaves. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Not okay. planned. <laughs> oh, I think it was great. Mum never does that. I always like. I'm like, Ooh. are you ready? And she's like, sure. And I'm like, and eh, bye. And she's like, oh. <laughs> like how many of my videos? Have I know. You seen? I know. Oh man. Oh, that was good. Okay, that should be enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we had a really nice time together doing that interview, I think, and hopefully you guys like it. And as I've mentioned, there will be a giveaway in that video as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that on Saturday. I am going to get on with the McCall 6891 in the Chantilly Cotton Cotton Lawn. <laughs> the Chantilly Cobra Corsage cotton lawn. I've got the machine set up for that colour thread. I know changing the thread on the machine is not a lot of work but this is how my brain works. It's already set up for that so I'm thinking I might just get the shirt dress sewn today as well. I have done this shirt dress in a day in the past, the green cotton lawn one. I did get that completely sewn in a day. It was a long day but I did do it so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, touch wood that I can get another one done in a day we shall see yeah so i'll stop waffling at you and i'll get on with doing some sewing let's see how we get on 12 seconds later i said that i'm going to reorganize the stash on sunday during the live hangout because i have a big pile of fabrics here that i got for birthday presents mum mum stole some of this one and that they need to be kind of put into the stash in I mean they could just go in but as you guys know I kind of organize it by fabric type and then by color that's kind of gone out a little bit out the window since I reorganized into collections but not all of them are collections some of them are still fabric types so I really need to reorganize my viscose and I think I want to organize the stuff behind me as well the top making fabrics can stay where they are but I do want to bring over my bag making fabrics and swap it over 
with the quilting cottons and stuff that I have there, the stash of quilting fabrics, because I'm probably not going to be making a quilt for quite a long time. Yeah, I think I need to just rearrange that a little bit a little bit but I'm kind of itching to do it now and I've said I'm going to do it on the Sunday hangout so I've got to wait I, I, I kind of like I'm in the reorganizing mood so fingers crossed fingers crossed it's still the case on Sunday but anyway I'm gonna really stop waffling at you now and get on with sewing this dress Later. okay a little progress update I have two scrunchies I always tend to cut two of these out because I cut it out on the fold and it's just easier I have the tie the waist tie done just needs the hand sewing finishing on that and then i have my two facing pieces and i have used the bias binding that i made when i was cutting all this all out to bind the edges i'm hoping i'm hoping there's enough left to do the hem of the skirt there might be there might not be if there isn't i'm thinking i might turn it and turn it again because that's what i'm going to do with the lining of this skirt and i am fully lining this dress because it is ever so slightly see-through this fabric and i would prefer to have it lined i'm gonna lay that out again so i don't need to press it so lay it out flat so uh yes i am fully lining this dress I have lined, fully lined the Flamingo Habitat one, which is the white one I made last year because it was sheer and I fully lined the green one that I made earlier this year that I did for the sew along, which is up here if you would like to look at it, because I just liked how it looked and I like the fullness that it gives the skirt. So I have got the skirt pieces to do next. So I'm going to be French seaming in the pockets and again there is a tutorial for that which I'll link in the description down below so I'm going to get the skirt pieces sewn together and have a look and see if I've got enough bias binding to hem it because I'm not going to let these hang on the bias because they haven't dropped in the last two that I've made so I can't see why this one would having said that it probably will now because I've just you know not let it drop but fingers crossed touch wood it's not going to do that so let's get some skirt pieces sewn and then we can work on the bodice and I mean realistically this is a quick project actually this is a quick shirt dress to do there's lots of little fiddly bits but once you've got those done just putting the bits together yeah not too bad let's get it done one hour later I did have enough bias binding I've got a meter left so I will keep this because I'll probably be able to do a neckline or something like that with this little bit left or possibly even maybe because I haven't made any bias binding from the kiwi and I have got a little bit of the scraps left but if not then I can use this for the armholes for the kiwi one as well so there's that so yes I need to go and press the skirts together pockets are french seamed in the lining is french seamed together so I just need to go and press the hem of the lining press the bias binding up on this one for hand stitching later and then baste them together so that I can then move on to making the bodice of the dress three hours later it's nearly finished it is way past nine o'clock though so i thought i would put it on and show you before i took it up to finish hemming it and that's all that needs doing i've done one panel of the skirt but the other three panels of the skirt should just need to be hand hemmed so i have accidentally look like i've fussy cut the lapels they've got exactly the same motifs on them and then also this part of the bodice clearly being cut from the same part of the pattern but I don't think that's the end of the world I think this is a busy enough print that I kind of get away with it this is the third one of these dresses that I have made let me just tip you down a little bit I am wearing black underwear under the, underneath this but it is fully lined and I'm not sure that you can see it so I've got the sash on at the moment I do like these sashes I did say that I think I ought to have maybe got belts made by harlequin rather than the sashes but if i do do that then i can always use these in my hair and it would be something that i would probably do i have put pockets in this time i've gone for plain white visc um, cotton lawn pockets and the lining of this is plain white as well because the print if you have the print underneath of the if you have the print like layered up on itself you can see shadows of the different images underneath of it so this is all lined in white cotton lawn and that also allows me to finish the armholes with a lining rather than a facing although this pattern does come with a facing if you would rather do that but it's a really really pretty dress i i mean <laughs> 
I, you guys know I love this print. I have been saying that a lot recently because you've been seeing a lot of this print. But yeah, very, very happy with this. We'll wear this a lot over the next couple of months. Can definitely also wear this in the cooler months with one of my mock neck tight long sleeved tops underneath of it, which is why I haven't put sleeves on this one. I had thought about it, but I just prefer sleeveless dresses because I can put a jumper or a cardigan over the top of them and not have to fight getting the sleeve on and off as it were and still be able to then kind of like take the jumper off and regulate my temperature without having to worry about the sleeves if that makes sense and it also means that I can wear it as I, as I mentioned in the cooler months with things underneath of it as well which I do like having as an option so yeah I'm super super pleased with this one I knew I was going to be this as I say is the third 6891 although it's now a butterick pattern with a different number and i can't remember that number off the top of my head but there is a sew along for this dress if you would like to have a look at it i've used the large coconut shell buttons these are three quarter of an inch buttons i think they go with everything they're just you know they're wooden buttons i'm going to use them on the 8577 with the kiwi i probably wouldn't use them in fact i'm not going to use them on the 9076 teal viscose dress because they have some buttons on the cuff i'm probably going to dig out some turquoise buttons from my stash or because there's buttons down the front as well for the little rouleau loops the faux kind of i'm i'm changing that pattern up so that it's got a side zipper in it because i didn't like the way that the skirt was finished on the original so i'm putting a different skirt on it and then showing you how i'm fully lining the bodice because i'm changing quite a lot about that pattern but yeah the buttons down the front and buttons on the cuff and i'm either going to do self-covered buttons from the solid parts of the teal or i'm going to dig out some teal turquoisey color buttons that i have in my stash i am going to take this off take it back up to the main house and finish hemming the skirt as i say i've done one panel and there are three more to do so i'm going to get that done and then this will be another one that gets added to my things to wear over the next couple of months which i am very excited about because it is gorgeous and it's really nice to finally have sewn up all this fabric some of these colorways this one particularly have been in my stash for a very very long time the black lena crepe as well has also been in the stash for a very very long time and just because i got the kind of fear about oh if i make something with these what if i make the wrong thing and then i will regret it and yeah just kind of putting it all together and just being like right i have to work my way through it and cut these things out has meant that i've used these fabrics that i have been treasuring and stashing and hoarding for a very very long time and i think that's one of the things that has really helped get me over the fear of i don't want to make the wrong thing with these i mean i know i can get more of all of these fabrics and i have some fabrics in my stash that i can't get more of and i would be much more reluctant to cut into if i didn't know that i was making a dress like this for example which i know is a huge success and know i wear it often it has been good for me just to kind of be like yep making the things gonna like things things are gonna be good rather than procrastinating on it so yeah what do you guys do do you have fabrics in your stash that have been there for ages and you know you can't get any more of them and you have the utter fear of cutting into them I mean some of the silks I've had in my stash for 15 years now and I kind of think I know what I want to do with them but I'm also still terrified to cut them cut into them yeah let me know in the comments down below what your deep stash fabric is and what you're scared why you're scared about cutting into it is it that you're going to make the wrong thing or is it that you don't feel like you're confident enough to make the thing yet or is it that you just don't know what to make with it at all so yeah let me know in the comments down below anyway on that note i am literally just waffling at you so i'm gonna say good night i hope you've enjoyed the last couple of days it's been really nice being back down here it's really nice getting back into garment sewing again i'm looking forward to getting the cobra corsage done three more projects two dresses and a shirt and then i can move on to some leaves which i am so looking forward to and i think i'm going to work through my oddly colored leaves first rather than the green ones because i think i'm there's some projects in there that i'm really really excited about getting to anyway on that note i'm going to say good night so i see you all tomorrow bye